The CTE's Teaching as a Graduate Student program is designed to give graduate teaching assistants an introduction to learner-centered teaching principles and practices in order to make your teaching and your students' learning more successful. In this talk, we want to cover two concepts, metacognition and mindset, which can tremendously impact students' learning and success. These concepts also align well with the kinds of teaching TAs are usually asked to do, and they can be easily incorporated into your work. A little bit of targeted emphasis on metacognition and mindset can pay off in a big way for your students' learning. Growing up, I played the violin. By the time I got to high school, I was pretty good at it. I played in the orchestra at school, I played in the local university orchestra, I took private lessons, practiced all the time, and yet at a certain point I stopped getting any better. I hit this plateau and I got so frustrated because I would practice and I would practice and I would practice and just couldn't improve. Eventually my frustration won. When I went to college I stopped taking private lessons. Pretty soon thereafter I gave up on the orchestra. And not long after that, I stopped playing altogether. Looking back now, I can recognize this as a failure of metacognition. Metacognition is the ability to think about your own thinking, to evaluate your own learning processes, and accurately judge whether you've learned something or not. Successful learners, that is people with strong metacognitive skills, are able to recognize what kind of learning they're being asked to do and adjust their strategies accordingly. They're able to recognize patterns and incorporate new knowledge onto existing knowledge. A lot of college students are just starting to develop their metacognitive skills. In many cases, they were very successful in high school and they come to college expecting to be able to employ the same strategies and get the same results. And this doesn't always work. A very common scenario, we just handed back the first test of the semester and now there's a student in your office hours who's really upset. I, re I studied and studied and studied, they say. How did I get a C? Well, not all studying is the same and students often are used to employing particular strategies like rereading their notes and reviewing the textbook that actually can give false positives around how well they actually know something. Our brains remember that we've seen something before and this makes us think we actually know it, but when we sit down in front of the test, it's all just gone. Whereas students who employ strategies such as self-testing know right away whether or not they really know the material or not. This ability to try different strategies to give you a better sense of whether or not you do or do not know something, that's what metacognition allows students to do. There are various ways to think about cognition and learning. Bloom's taxonomy is one that's fairly familiar to us and it's helpful to illustrate some of the mismatches that can occur between students' expectations around what they're learning and what we're actually asking them to do. Many students have been really successful in high school doing the kinds of learning that are at the bottom of the pyramid here. They are very good at remembering and understanding basic ideas and then regurgitating that back on a test. There are certain techniques that you might do to approach that kind of learning. The problem comes when in college we're asking students to do more sophisticated kinds of learning. We're asking them to analyze and apply and evaluate things. If students aren't aware that this is asking them to do something different, that they may need to take different strategies in order to, to be successful, this is where you get that mismatch. Um, this is where you get the student that's studying and studying and studying and not able to be successful. This was me as a high school violinist practicing and practicing and practicing in all the wrong ways. This mismatch between what students are expecting to have to learn and how they're going to learn it and what we really want them to do suggests that part of our responsibility is not just to teach the content of our disciplines, but to teach students how they will think in our disciplines. Adriana, in a few minutes, will give you some concrete ideas about how you can do that. First, Lindsay is going to introduce our second main concept. Elizabeth shared her violin story and talked a little bit about metacognition. 
Now I want to share my story. So when you look at this picture, what do you see? I see chemistry. I see the light reflecting and absorbing off of the different surfaces to create the colors that we see. I can visualize the atoms and the molecules that make up the wood, the air, and the sand. See, I love chemistry. I have since high school. And in fact, I majored in chemistry. My two lowest grades actually were in chemistry courses. But did I give up? No, actually, I decided to pursue a PhD in chemistry. So why is that? Well, in part, it's because I had a growth mindset about chemistry. Now, a lot of people think, because I love chemistry, I also love physics. That's not the case. Let's take a look at this picture again from a physics perspective. Could I calculate the velocity of one of these cliff jumpers? Maybe. Could I calculate the exact location with which one of these cliff jumpers would land given a variety of different factors? Absolutely not. See, I'm not good at physics. I never have been. And I almost got through my entire science career without taking a single physics class. The one I did take was the summer before I graduated. And I remember going to office hours to get help. I walked in and everybody seemed to know what was going on. They understood it. I didn't, so I left. So why is it that I feel so differently about physics? Well, in part, it's due to the fact that I had a fixed mindset about physics. So I've used this word twice, mindset. But what does it mean? Mindset is a belief in one's ability. In chemistry, I had a growth mindset, meaning I believed that my ability to do chemistry could grow. It was malleable. In physics, I had a fixed mindset, meaning that I did not believe that my ability to do physics could change. When students have a fixed mindset, they view learning as a performance and believe effort means they aren't good at something. As a result, they have a tendency to shut down in the face of challenges, constructive criticism, and success of others. On the other hand, students with a growth mindset view learning as a process and embrace the idea of effort and challenge as essential for learning. Now, there are three characteristics about the research on mindset and student learning that are gonna be important for you as a TA. First, mindsets are not binary. They don't exist as fixed or growth. Rather, they exist on a continuum. A student could have an extremely fixed mindset or they could have a mindset somewhere in the middle. Second, mindsets are context dependent. As you saw, I had a very fixed mindset about physics and a growth mindset about chemistry. The discipline and the topic matter. So you could have a student that has a very fixed mindset about math, and a very growth mindset about writing. Third, and what I find the most interesting piece is that mindsets can change. They're not static. The ways that we interact with our students and the feedback that we provide them can actually shift their mindsets over time from fixed-minded behaviors to growth-minded behaviors. So now that you know a little bit about metacognition and mindset, what do you do about it? Elizabeth and Lindsay have provided two examples of how a lack of metacognitive skills or a fixed mindset can hinder students' learning. Now you're probably wondering, what can I, as a TA, do about it? How can I help my students develop metacognitive skills and help them develop a growth mindset? Let's start with Elizabeth's story. As she described, her stalled progress on the violin was due in part to a lack of metacognitive reflection. This is a common experience for students who may be unused to thinking deliberately about the strategies that they are employing to learn. 
students often resort to habits or practices they've used in the past and may not be aware that the kinds of thinking and learning that are being asked of them are different from the ones that they have used before. So what can you do as a TA? You can have conversations with your students about the kinds of study skills and practices and habits that they need to succeed in your course. These can be informal conversations, such as in office hours, or better yet, you can have these conversations in your class so that all students benefit from them. In Elizabeth's case, her violin teacher could have worked with her to identify the skills she was most struggling with and developed practice routines to help her address those skills. Elizabeth could also have come up with a set of questions to ask herself when she felt stuck, such as, what part of this piece is giving me the most trouble? What motivates me to practice? And what are some strategies I can try when what I'm doing isn't working? Now let's move on to Lindsay's story and address the ways that you, as a TA, can help your students develop a growth mindset. In your teaching, you regularly give your students feedback. This could be informal feedback that is verbal in the classroom, or it might be feedback that you return in written comments or numerical calculations and a letter grade. Feedback is an opportunity to cultivate a growth mindset in our students. Here on this slide, you will see different forms of feedback. In this first column, the gray column, these are forms of feedback that are likely to lead to a fixed mindset because they emphasize ability and do not encourage students to be persistent in their efforts. In this other column, the yellow column, you'll see a bunch of options that encourage a growth mindset. This is feedback that encourages effort and development and persistence. Note that emphasizing process and effort alone is insufficient. If students apply the wrong or ineffective processes to their studying and their learning, then no amount of effort is going to help them, and they will shut down and revert to a fixed mindset because they'll see their effort as evidence of their inability. So in addition to cultivating a growth mindset through our feedback, we also need to help students develop the right strategies to learn. This is why metacognition and mindset go so well together. Note too, that it's important that we always maintain high expectations for our students. Encouraging a growth mindset does not mean that we lower our standards for students. In fact, it's really important to help students understand our standards so that they can make targeted progress toward their goals. You can show your students this success iceberg image to remind them that a successful outcome is only the visible part of the learning process, and that struggles to achieve that outcome do not mean that they are incapable or unintelligent. In fact, struggling is a natural part of the learning process. Concretely, how would a growth mindset have helped in Lindsay's case? Lindsay was stuck in a fixed mindset about physics, she believed that she was just fundamentally not good at it and never would be. But if her TAs or professors had helped her to understand that becoming good at physics is a process and that there are strategies that she could have applied bit by bit to improve, she may have moved her fixed mindset along that continuum into more of a growth mindset. Who knows, if her TAs had given her effective feedback that was growth-oriented, today Lindsay might have become a physicist instead of a chemist. In both Elizabeth's and Lindsay's case, we see that small interventions such as developing metacognitive skills and cultivating a growth mindset can pay big dividends for students' learning in the long run. To sum up, metacognition is the ability to think about your own thinking and to assess accurately how well you've learned something. This ability makes a huge difference in students' success. Mindset exists along a continuum from fixed to growth. Having a growth mindset can encourage students to persist when faced with challenges. And mindsets can shift based on an instructor's interactions and feedback. The principles of metacognition and mindset align well with the kinds of teaching you're asked to do as a TA, and they can be pretty easily built into your teaching practices.